To open the next session, please welcome Dr. Enrico Tanko, President of the Southeast Asian Radiation Oncology Group and Vice Chair of the Radiation Oncology Department, the Medical City, Philippines. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Our next session will be on updates in the use of radiotherapy in management of metastatic spine tumors, which will be discussed by our esteemed speaker, Professor Sayed Akram Hussein. He's a professor and a head of the Department of Oncology at the Northeast Medical College at Bangladesh. He graduated MBBS from Dhaka University, Bangladesh, residency in radiation oncology at the National Institute of Cancer Research and Hospital Fellow, also in radiation oncology, at Bangladesh College of Physicians and Surgeons, Master of Public Health in Epidemiology from Newcastle University, US, and Masters of Public Health in Clinical Epidemiology. From Atish Dipankor Science and Technology University, Dhaka, also in Bangladesh. He is a fellow of the College Physicians and Surgeons of Glasgow from the UK, fellow also of the College of Physicians of Edinburgh, also in the UK, he has expertise on IMRT, IGRT, gating system, CDMR simulations, and brachytherapy. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Said Akram Hussein. Honorable Chair, distinguished faculties, ladies and gentlemen, good day. Today, I'll talk on radiotherapy in metastatic spine tumors. I'll give an update. So just looking for the epidemiology, spine the most common site of osseous metastasis. Five to 10% of the patients with cancer uh, develop spine metastasis. And highest uh, age, age incidence is 40 to 65 years, and male and female, three is to two. Approximately 20% present with the symptoms of spinal canal invasion and cord compression. So, according to the location of why the thoracic spine is 60 to 80%, lumbar spine 15 to 30%, and cervical spine is less than 10%. The primary unknown 33%, breast 21%, lung 14%, and prostate 8%, and gastrointestinal 5%, and the thyroid 3%. So the clinical presentation, if we got the normal, the clinical presentation, the most, maybe the most of the patient are having the pain, 85% is constant and localized, radicular or axial. Spinal deformity may be found in the neurological deficit, may be found in the constitutional symptoms, may be there. So we also get the late red flag features, gradual onset, progressive constant in the night time of the recumbency pain and axial pain exacerbated by movement in all directions. So what will the approach? We look into the life expectancy assessment and the biopsy histology to predict the response to non operative management, stability, and clinical presentation, pain, and neurological status. Patients presenting with pain and no neurological deficit, analgesic treatment, physical therapy, brassing, and bisphosphonates, bachibroplasty or kyphoplasty, and radiofrequency ablation, radiation therapy, surgical stabilization in patients with a life expectancy of more than three months. So patients presenting with a neurological deficit, emergency whole spine MRI, and we can give the dexamethasone, and we can give the patients unstable spine. So we go for the bachibroplasty or the kyphoplasty and radiotherapy. So if the radiation, so if we found actually the neurological deficit less than 24 hours, so patient could be go for the surgical candidate and surgical decompression and stabilization followed by the radiotherapy. So it depends on the looking one for the if the if the radiation it, it, it may works better. So the corticosteroids actually should be the prescribed in all patients presenting with a neurological deficit in a high dose dexamethasone, standard dose, maybe uh, also the methylprednisolone. 
So in radiation therapy, we look for the general indication, the previously untreated radiosensitive tumor, stable or the slowly progressive neurological deficit, canal compromise secondary to soft tissue impingement and multiple myelographic blocks, and instabilities, surgery contraindicated, widespread spinal metastasis, the prognosis for long-term survival is poor. So external pain radiation therapy provides pain relief in more than 80% of patients and improves or maintains neurological function, restores or maintains the structural integrity of the spinal cord. Effects of radiotherapy, bone remodeling, a diagnosis, compression of spinal cord and bone construct destruction. And after you would look for this, uh, these two uh, uh, CT scan images. So look for the six months after radiotherapy, you can find actually saw how this almost healed. So need for surgery, the surgical fixation may be indicated prior to EVRT and decreased pain, facilitated rehabilitation in symptomatic bone metastasis and prophylactic fixation to prevent pathological fractures and surgical stabilization for of an unstable spine may be recommended prior to EVRT. Postoperative EVRT, the MRT, protection of spinal cord and option of free radiation. Short course versus the long course radiation therapy, the effect of a single fraction compared to the multiple fraction on the uh, bone metastasis, a global analysis of the Dutch bone metastasis study. So single fraction radiotherapy is efficacious and a further analysis of the Dutch bone metastasis, the study of controlling for the influence of retreatment. So that's bone metastasis study, the 1171 patient, the painful bone metastasis were randomly assigned to eight gray in a single dose or two 24 gray cis fractions. The palliative benefit was similar in both groups, overall pain relief in 72% and 69% of the patient respectively. Retreatment was required by significantly more patients treated with a single fraction, 25 versus 7%. So the randomized trial of short versus the long course radiotherapy for palliation of painful bone metastasis. They have studied the RTOG trial 9714, 949 patient with the prostate or breast cancer and the painful bone metastasis were randomly assigned to eight gray in a single fraction or a two 30 gray in 10 fractions. There were no significant differences in the rates of for the complete and pain partial pain relief overall 66% in the age group, the use of narcotics and or the incidence of subsequent pathological fractures. However, patient treated with a single fraction or twice as likely to require retreatment, 18 versus 9%. So the palliative radiation therapy for bone metastasis update of an astro evidence based guideline. So what is the Q1? So what fraction of the scheme have been shown to be effective for the treatment of painful and or prevention of morbidity from peripheral bone metastasis? Studies show relief equivalency following a single eight gray fraction, 20 gray fraction, 24 gray in six fraction, and 30 gray in 10 fraction for patient with unradiated painful bone metastasis. Patients should be made aware that single fraction RT is associated with a higher incidence of retreatment to the same painful site than is fractionated treatment. So you may agree almost 100%. One is single fraction RT appropriate for the treatment of pain and or prevention of morbidity from the uncomplicated bone metastasis involving the spine or other critical structures. A single eight gray fraction provides non-inferior pain relief compared with a more prolonged RT course in painful spinal sites and may therefore be particularly convenient and sensible for patients with limited life expectancy. Are there long-term side effect risks that should limit the use of the single fraction therapy? There continues to be no suggestion from available uh, quality data that single fraction produces an acceptable long-term side effect that might limit its use for the patients with the painful metastasis. Why should patients receive retreatment with radiation to the peripheral bone metastasis? Patient with persistent or recurrent pain more than 
one site following EBRT for symptomatic and peripheral bone metastasis should be considered for the retreatment while adhering to normal tissue dosing constraints described in the available literature. Why should patients receive retreatment with radiation to spine lesion causing recurrent pain? Patients with recurrent spine pain more than one month treatment should be considered for the EBRT retreatment to normal tissue dosing constraint described in the available literature. What promise does highly conformal RT should uh, uh, conformal RT hold for the primary treatment of painful bone metastasis? Advanced RT techniques such as the such as SVRT as the primary treatment painful spine bone lesions or for spinal compression should be considered in the setting of a clinical trial. Insufficient data are available to routinely support this treatment currently. Why should conformal RT be considered for the retreatment of the spine lesions causing recurrent pain? Advanced radiation techniques such as SBRT for recurrent pain in spine bone lesion may be feasible, effective, and safe. But the panel recommend that this approach should be limited to clinical trial. Does the use of surgery, radionuclides, by bisphosphonates, or kyphoplasty, oblique vertebroplasty, obviate the need for palliative RT for painful bone metastasis? The panel reiterates that the use of the surgery, radionuclide, bisphosphonate, or kyphoplasty, oblique vertebroplasty does obviate the need for the EVRT for patient with painful bone metastasis. Spine SBRT delivers a higher BED, biological effective dose, with greater conformity with EVRT, considered for primary treatment of radioresistant histology, renal cell melanoma sarcoma, salve treatment in previously irradiated spine, oligometastatic bone metastasis with control primary and who have an estimated survival of greater than six months. Single fraction stereotactic versus the conventional multi-fraction radiotherapy for pain relief in patients with a predominantly non-spine bone metastasis, a randomized phase two trial. 160 patients with a painful bone metastasis are randomly assigned to single fraction SBRT, 12 gray for a more than 4 cm lesion, 16 gray for a less than 4 cm lesion, or EVRT, 30 gray in 10 fraction. The single fraction SBRT group had a higher fraction of complete responder, 77 versus 46% at nine months. No local failures at 24 months of follow-up versus 10% local failure in the EVRT group. Outcomes in the radiosurgical management of metastatic spine disease. So with the median follow-up time of the 5.9 months, overall radiological local control was achieved in 84.7% of patients at six months and 74.7% .7 at one year. Patients who require upfront surgery before SBRT for the presence of a high grade epidural spinal cord compression, spinal column instability, or both had worse local control than those who did not require surgery. Patients treated with hyperfractionated SBRT had worse local control compared with those treated with a single fraction. Treatment of recurrent persistent pain, re irradiation, stereotactic radiation therapy, image guided local thermal ablation, radio pharmaceuticals. Re radiation, useful option for patient with painful bone metastasis if the initial treatment fails to adequately relieve bone pain and subsequent relapse after an initial response. Effectiveness of irradiation for painful bone metastasis, a systematic review and meta analysis. Uh, done in the Leiden University Medical Center. So in this case, actually they have done 2,694 patients are initially treated with RT for the painful bone metastasis. Re-radiation was subsequently used in 527, around 20%, and re-treatment produces some benefit in terms of pain relief in 58%, 96, 95% confidence interval is 49 to 67. 
radiation stereotactic body radiotherapy metastasis, a multi institutional outcome analysis. 60% of spinal target volumes are treated with a single fraction SBRT, 40% with multiple fraction SBRT, medium time interval from EBRT to radiation SBRT was 13.5 months and median duration of the patient follow-up was 8.1 months. So these are the some information, the six and 12 months local control rates, 93% and 83% respectively. So there was no cases of, uh, so, so you can find is a multivariate analysis and if the KPS less than 40 as a significant prognostic factor for the overall overall survival. Single fraction SBRT as a significant predictive factor for the better local control. There was no cases of radiation myelopathy and the vertebral compression fraction rate was 4.5%. So that's the images of information you can see here. So how they were changing happening. So the proton therapy is also useful this purposes. So heavy end therapy receive in case more attention. These are proton therapy is tumor the most notable in the acordomas and currently no are commonly used in metastatic settings. What is the take home message? Eight gray fraction provides non inferior pain compared fraction uh, relief. And the compared fraction at RT and convenient for the patient, the limited expenses, expect life expectancy, uncomplicated painful bone metastasis, uh, single fraction of eight gray is preferred, patient with a relatively long expectancy, six months or more longer, a fractionated regime is reasonably alternative. SBT should be reserved mostly for the patient who persists recurrent bone pain after a standard course of external membrane therapy. SBT may be preferred over external membrane therapy in is in the definitive treatment of symptomatic bone metastasis, particularly for radio resistant cases like as renal cell carcinoma, melanoma, and sarcoma. But will metastasis with the epidural extension, but you know, high grade epidural spinal cord compression. For patients with oligometastatic bone disease, uh, control side and the long estimated the life expectancy as a reasonable approach, maybe. So the role of the proton therapy is still under investigation in the metastatic setting. Thank you. So I just gave you one information about the COVID situation in our country. We are taking, in particular in my hospital, we are treating patients, uh, the cancer patients. We are taking uh, many of our patients also infected by the COVID, but uh, some we after, uh, but during COVID situation and the COVID infected patient, we, we give the treatment. So patient after, a patient given RTPC negative, then we started treatment uh, again for the radiotherapy or chemotherapy of the patient. But beforehand, radiotherapy and chemotherapy, we go, we in generally for the standard, we have for each and every patient, we go for do in general RTPCR before starting treatment. So, but our, we did not stop treatment, we continue treatment until today, we continue treatment because we have a huge number of patients in our country and Due to COVID situation, many patients, some patients used to go to outside. This patient cannot go outside, so we have to treat patient in our country in such a situation. We try to support them the best way. Thank you. Thank you for your patient sharing. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. First of all, I'd like to thank the uh, AOS and the organizer to invite the guest to deliver this particular stream. Our guest is uh, Professor Dixon. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, I'm looking here at I'm looking here at the uh, site for questions. Apparently, no one has asked any questions, so I'd like to ask uh, a few questions on my own. Uh, you mentioned that IMRT can also be used, especially for radiation. Yeah. What would be your criteria, for example? Uh, can you use this uh, as a primary first line instead of radiation to use it as uh, the primary uh, treatment for uh, initial treatment for poor metastasis? Yeah, uh, you, you know that actually there is uh, many study results uh, for we can use even SBRT for primary treatment as a bone metastasis. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Even even we can we, there are many trials going on for the proton therapy. 
so proton is uh, also particularly for the uh, maybe the results are coming up uh, but in the some types of some there some uh, maybe some places is doing very well particularly for corona so such places the proton therapy in doing very good results yeah but other thing actually may be coming up we are waiting for the results yeah okay uh, from what i understand imrt would be good uh, in sparing, for example, the spinal cord, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this would give the ability to do re-irradiation in the future in a safer manner? Yeah, yeah, sir. Yeah, absolutely, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, you mentioned also mm -hmm. that uh, right now, sort of the there is to either give one dose of eight gray yeah. or to give the standard have there been studies, because you also mentioned there were other fractionation schedules. For example, the one um, in giving uh, 20 gray in five uh, sessions. Has yeah. there been any uh, study comparing the three for and any difference between the three schedules? Yeah, we have actually, uh, uh, this, uh, we have given a show where we discussed about the study, you know, uh, did you find the one study we have given, which uh, particularly for your, can you just uh, mention about the re-edition or the primary for the comparison? No, for the primary, the, for the primary. For the single, uh, single, uh, uh, single fraction. fraction? Yes. Single fraction, yeah, and conventional, yeah. Actually, they have studied uh, over actually the randomized trial, uh, uh, so randomized trial actually, Doing for uh, one particular DAS has been DAS one study, one has been the DAS one study has been done. So, regarding a single fraction versus efficacy about this actually. So, there's a one information about this actually, particularly in our uh, setting, particularly country like us in Bangladesh. So, we have the number of machines left. Uh, in, uh, in requirement, uh, we have a requirement is high, but number of because our patients, so we are getting more spirity patients, many many stage up patients, and this patient having metastasis, uh, uh, we having a metastasis. So the, for this actually, our machine are occupied. Maybe uh, many machine in the government, the public sector is maybe 200, even 300 patients, 200, even 150, 200 patients per day. So it is very difficult to manage. So one thing actually, so this will be useful for us. Actually, in the fraction is very useful for our patients setting. So the comparative result is similar, but one issue is actually there. Sometimes we found that a single fraction and uh, multiple fraction. Some uh, studies said actually maybe the multiple frac uh, single fraction may be. Uh, uh, maybe the recurrence could be happen again. There's, there's some information like that. Okay. Uh, you mentioned 150 patient, patients. Is that for one machine? Uh, yeah, one. Uh, so maybe, no, maybe one. Uh, it's a cobalt machine we're using for such things. In our country, we have a cobalt machine. From day morning to uh, night, in the midnight, so in the continuing treatment for like this uh, for the palliative setting. Oh, that's uh, long, long hours. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Something like what three shifts? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes with the public sectors, they are using like that actually two or three shifts. Okay. Um, one last question, actually. Um, when do you suggest using IMRT versus conventional RT as a primary treatment? Yeah. What would be your criteria saying that I rather use IMRT for this patient or just use conventional? Uh, particularly for the, you know, the actually the solid tumor, the radio resistant, the cases, you know, the radio resistant cases are something very difficult to manage. So radio resistant, the solid tumors are many a times such from melanoma, some other cases may be radio resistant. And these cases you can, uh, IMRT or SBRT is very good for these cases. And other cases we can use the conventional one. No problem. Okay. So thank you very much. Um, so I think the, I would end the session. I'd like to, again to thank uh, Professor Singh for guesting in our uh, session here.
it was yeah. a very very good uh, lecture uh, actually I was sent a copy earlier and I've been replaying it and I've learned even more as I replay the tape thank you so much thank you Good evening to everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much.